Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. We got a special podcast, so welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid. We also have Cannabis Legalization News with Tom Howard and Miggy420. We're here with us. Uh, state your name for the record. Uh, Sean the Sitka. Yeah, we're here with Sitka Hash House uh, at Sitka Gold for social media, talking everything that is bricks of hash uh for those that don't know they've been hiding under a rock for some time what is hash <laughs> nick why don't you take it we got oh, we, we got nick here nick's uh yeah, my co-founder. co-founder yeah i mean uh, hash maker he makes it yeah. this is the guy so what is hash yeah real simple yeah. hash is just a uh it's a concentration of all the trichomes that grow on the outside of your flower. And we mix it together and break those trichomes open to release the oil. And it turns into this putty kind of cake-like substance that to give smoke. And it's good potency level and it smells delicious and it's got some really great consistent flavor with it. So I thought it was maybe old school when I, when I like hash. I've been around for a little while, you know, gray as you can tell. So I wasn't sure like why I like hash until I've learned more about uh, terpenes and full spectrum so it's not an isolate right this isn't kind of just one specific cannabinoid with hash is the reason why i like it is because of the full terpene profile like what is it about hash that makes somebody that's old school like me really enjoy it i think part of it is probably a little bit of nostalgia if you've smoked it before but uh it is definitely has to do with the flavor has to do with the flavor profile of it which is just much, so much more deeper um, than you would normally get from flour. And flour, you know, and a lot of distillates will come in all sorts of different flavors and you can get, you know, the world of flavors, rainbow of flavors. And hash tends to always have this hashy kind of consistent flavor to it. And it's just warm and deep. It's kind of like drinking a whiskey or something like that. So it's just got this whole little subset off to the side where it's like a unique flavor experience for you. You know, and it's very smooth to smoke, so it's just nice to add to a joint and put on top of a bowl. Yeah. This one says Lebanese red hash. How many hash do you guys make? Ooh, boy. We're making, well, consistently we have our gold, which is a sativa blend, our red, which is an indica blend, and we do a cascade cream, which is our gold that's mixed with a little rosin. bit of uh, rosin at this oh. point. So it's like a little bit, so- it's a lot softer, has a higher terpene. You know, profile to it. Is this that with the rosin mix in? Is it kind of like, like, a, like a battery that you're making? Mm, yeah, it's, it's, not, like a, it's not quite battery. You know, it's, 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 we ball it up because it's not strong enough to stand it on a brick on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, stability. It's, yeah, it's oh, soft, but it's yeah. not, you know. Neat. Cream is our, is really our, like, uh, I guess the way I describe it, it's our, you know, it's our way to regionalize it into our own thing. So, that's why it's called, you know, we're sitting here at the, at the base of the cascade, right? Okay. So in there, it's arguable, you know, and hopefully we get a discussion going. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a long history of at least people claiming there's additives in certain hashes, right? Hmm. So, you know, uh, on the on the hippie trail, right, there's, there's a lot of stories in the 70s of people bringing back, you know, uh, tales of hashish that has had additives added you know yeah. uh, opium oh things like that things basically things that that can be you know found really prevalently in the regions it's made mm-hmm. whether it's true or not it's true here where we have a shit ton of rosin right? okay. we made rosin and so putting that into by hand mixing it into these bricks um yeah. is what cascade cream is now in california uh we we have a product called coastal cream which is made in the coastal northern coastal regions okay. of California, which has lab resin in it, which is like just about as uh, as you know prevalent as water yeah. there. Which actually, <laughs> isn't very, isn't, it's not very prevalent there right now. Actually, water, but yeah. live resin is. Um, and so you have your coastal cream there, and so the idea behind it is that we're regionalizing, you know, our own version of these cream ashes. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So red, gold. Cream is always available in yeah. one gram version. Um, one gram. This is this is this is a special press, a single source with uh, Canisaw Farms. Oh, wow. um, so once in a while, we do what we call a special press, which is a uh, strain specific single source, basically taking our friends' cultivars yeah. 
and sort of giving people a new way to experience it. Right. All that is always available, like in a one gram, uh, which is like the you know the oldest way to consume it. And in the Sicarillo, which is this really? I mean, this these these are bomb. Um, the grocery store then, because like I remember, like I used to like so, when I used to sell hash or like when I sell uh, pharmaceutical bag. Uh, I would break up little balls and then sell and like put a little ball in your uh, your pipe. Yeah, somebody is at the door. <laughs> um, bring him in. Yeah, come on. Bring him in. Let's see what he, oh, it's oh, it's a delivery. So the oh, thing with oh, this oh, style oh. hashish, you guys, is. I'm sorry. This oh, this style hashish. It's a good question about like how does it burn, and really at its essence, hashish is it's a lot like incense. It's taking you know taking these aromatic parts of the plant, mm. the trichome, and mushing them together, like Nick said. And there's a lot more to it than that, but it burns a lot like incense. Okay. So it doesn't. It shouldn't melt too much. It'll bubble a little, but it it should burn. Nice white ash. It should light on fire, blow it out just like a stick of incense, mm -hmm. okay. and then it'll burn end to end. And so that's where the Rillo comes in, which yeah. is a pre-roll that's wrapped in a paper thin um, sheet of hashish. That's mm -hmm. not a blunt wrap. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually a sheet of paper. So yeah, I mean, if you think of uh, uh, burning just like a stick of incense, that's what this baby does. Okay. End to end, smooth as anything. What does that retail for? Um, can we do that on Instagram? Probably, probably a lot. Oh, okay. Well, again, like it's a higher price for you. Yeah. <laughs> I like to do, and this is one of the problems on the channel is because, like, I like to talk about the industry on, yeah. on a nationwide. Yeah, very like we can't get this. This doesn't exist in no. Illinois, and so then no. like, you're not supposed to talk about prices on this stuff. It's like no, but we can. You understand it from like a, a business standpoint. It's not like we could sit there and be like, oh, we make uh, this type of widget. How much does that cost you? Hang on there, Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you all about the cogs that go into it and right. dig really deep and just make people log off. But you know, for, right. for a fair uh -huh. market, though, eventually, like, why should we not talk about price? Yeah. Because no, like, we should. It's, yeah. it should yeah. all be lateral. Instead, you're going to get jacked in like Tennessee or some shit when you don't have a chance to. Well, it's the third P, right? It's a, of marketing, right? Price is very Ooh, important. Price. The answer to your question, is, which <laughs> that is that that is a higher price pre roll. You know, like yeah. uh, 30, 40 bucks. In okay. There. Oh, okay. So, um, but it's a good value. I mean, yeah. we sell a lot of them. Um, I so think it could garner a higher price. It's a grand. You guys did a whole bit of hash, right? It's hash has been around joint. for a long time. So, some of the. On top of the, the hash? Or? No, it's a half gram hash, half gram joint. Okay. Well, some of the more famous, uh, maybe uh, makers of hash or the originators of hash is between uh, Lebanon and Morocco. So the, I would say if you go to Amsterdam, like the most popular hash you're going to see out there is Lebanese hash, the black hash, hash yeah. or red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why is that? What is what is the Lebanese red? What is the Moroccan gold? Why, why are those two areas so – like I think of baklava. I don't necessarily think of hash. So what's, what is it about those regions where hash is so prevalent and so – such a long historical root? When you, when you smoke it I, – I don't know. I, I smoke – I smoke our hash almost exclusively. I don't. I don't smoke flour. Um, I don't really dab. Um, you know, dog food. It's, it's always been my my preferred, <laughs> you know, form of concentrate. I mean, I smoke it. Just pop it in a pipe and smoke it. And I think you know there are there. It's, it's what we call demonstrable characteristics of this type of product, right? It doesn't. And there's reasons for it. We can get it gets a little gooey, and we can get into that. But it doesn't tend to make you. It doesn't give anxiety. Gets you super stoned, but it doesn't give you anxiety. And there's a couple reasons we think that happens. It's 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 probably because of the cure. It's because of the hashishing content. It's got a little bit of a different. It's got full spectrum cannabinoids. It's got a little bit of a different terpene content. So it doesn't give you this the the, uh, the terpene the terp sweats. Mm. You know, which some people get, or I do, I'll, I'll claim it. Um, <laughs> and so, I don't know, I think that the prevalence of it in Europe has more to do uh, with the actual characteristics of the product and possibly cultural mm. reasons um, than, the, uh, than the fact that it's just everywhere. Because, I mean, geographically, it's, it's easy to get it in there, right? Mm -hmm. right? And until now, until we came along... It was awful hard to get it 
in the United States unless, you know, it was the 2000s when we had a lot of, you know, military going back oh, yeah. or things like that or the, or the 70s, 60s. But I, I really think it's cultural more than anything else because it's a, it's just, it might be just something that they like to experience more than we do here. But we're changing that. I mean, it's getting really popular in Washington. Washington is one of the, you know, biggest markets for hashish. And people will ask us why do you think it's more popular here than yeah. Illinois? And I'll tell it you. It does exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> when we went to California, they're like, why do you? Well, it's only popular in Washington. And we're like, well, because yeah. we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> people do make it. I mean, I'm not saying saying that, but the prevalence of it is is, you know, it's just something that Americans don't know a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. think. Well, they know it's on the bottom of a grinder, right? With Keith, yeah. and it, they know kind of dabs maybe a little bit in the last couple of years. What's the difference, I guess, between yeah. a hash making process and Keith and like a CO2 concentrate oil? What's the difference? The real, I mean, you know, it is made from Keith. It's yeah. made from, you know, dry sift. It's dry sifted resin that is pressed together and cured. Mm. So the difference really comes in the homogenization of the keef and the curing of that keef. And to really cure it, you need to break it open, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise it's encapsulated oh, wow. and it just degrades, yeah. right? So these, you know, we should have one that we can cut open. Don't yeah. think. Mm -hmm. um, these, the inside of these are cold, so we can't. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's got, it's got things that happen to it beyond being in your grinder. That make it different chemically. Hmm. Like what? Curing. How do you cure okay. hash? Press it into this, mm -hmm. and uh, curing, you know, at its core, is exposing things to different uh, light and air, different yeah. levels of heat, different levels of cold. Um, that's really what it is. Expose it to light and air, and it Story changes, mm -hmm. and it changes, yeah. and so. Yeah, that's, I mean, and, and in fact, we have, we have for six years, we've set aside a brick of this every run. Oh, wow. Holy shit. And cured it. So we have six year old, uh, five year old, four, three, and, uh, and we'll be launching it, I believe, in October. Nice. In Washington. Wow. Yeah. At what point in the name of science do you plan on smoking those six year old? Oh, it's been smoked. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the name of science, it's been smoked. <laughs> and, and, and what happens is, like that hashy flavor. I think there's a point where it'll degrade beyond mm. there. But there is, there's a, whatever that hashy flavor is, and whatever that effect that I was just talking about is, that like you know, it gets really stoned, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you the, the sweats. Gets a little more, yeah. the more you. So it just magnifies it. So. As you get that six year stuff, um, it just tastes like really strongly of hash. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense, right? Well, like, like hash is the oldest concentrate, I always like to say. Yep. You know, it's like the one thing like everybody can associate with. But, like, when you're talking about like, the difference of, uh, like, with the distillates or the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, concentrates, uh, uh, it's like solvents used, right? Like, with hash, are you using just water for your solvent? Not even water. No. No. Dry yeah. sip. So, yeah, so for, for this, it's completely dry sip, so oh, solventless. So completely it's going through a tumbler, which basically just has a really fine screen on it, and yeah. just the trichomes are falling through, and we yeah. just collect all that like it's a bunch of sand. Oh. And we make we bubble hash it. too. Yeah, we do do ice solvents. water extraction as well. Yeah. But we do it's that, different. and it's funny because like you'll be on uh, Instagram and say you know solventless, you know bubble well, hash, and somebody on, guys. Yeah. somebody will immediately will. will you know, definitely correct you and say that water is actually a solvent and you're like, oh <laughs> shit. But I'll tell you, like being in here and, and doing the washing, it does wash stuff off. And I mean, it does, it, in, in the case of bubble ash, it washes stuff off it that you want washed off it, right? That's the whole point. But it definitely washes stuff off it. So one of the things you're doing here is, you know, retaining like absolutely everything that's in there. Mm. Mm. Then what's the difference? Smell that. It smells smell so good. It. Yeah. So. It's it's like full, but it's, it's got such complexity. It's hard to describe. Well, the reason uh, you ever you ever read the uh, Journal of uh, Chromatography? Uh, no, they, they released a <laughs> daily. <laughs> daily. Well, they released a paper on it uh, 
right, where they identified the, the terpene hashishin in 2011. Oh, really? Um, so check that out. It's pretty cool hmm. because they ident- they called it hashishin for the re- one reason, and it's because uh, it's the only place they had ever identified that particular terpene. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's in other things, but they called it that because that's where they identified it. And so there's something with that when you smell that and you go, ah, it's not really, but it's familiar, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it brings you, and and the, one of the things with that sense, you know, well, same with music and taste. Mm. If you have a notable experience and you've never heard that song anywhere yeah, else, yeah. you're going to go there. And so there's something to that where it like it's, it's, it transports you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's pining. I'll walk by the same city block mm-hmm. in Seattle on Third Avenue right across from the courthouse. And it hits <laughs> that <laughs> old school, what it used to smell like yeah. back in the day. That yeah. good old funk or skunk. <laughs> yeah. You don't smell it that much anymore. Nope. You, know, you smell it in a fish parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, that's it. And I just sit over there and I'm like, I want to go ask those guys what it is and where I can get it, but I don't want to be that guy. But yep. yeah. yeah. Well, we bred some of that out of flour, haven't we? You know, a little bit. The, yeah. the yeah. old school. Uh, they were trying turkeys. to avoid detection. And then also, people always want something new. But this is clearly uh, the original concentrate. So what percentage THC, and THC shouldn't get all the credit, but what percentage THC is this concentrate? Uh, lots of times, well, through our testing, it averages somewhere around like 30, 40s. Oh, yep. 30s and 40s. See, this one's a little low. This one is a, is a 30. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it runs 30 to 40. Yeah, almost pretty standard. Without, I mean, yeah, it can get up to 45, 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it, can be, it can be higher. But we don't um, worry too much about that. You know, in right. the early days, yeah. um, I mean, it's good, clean, uh, potent medicine. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. and uh, and in the early days, people would say, "Ah, oh, it's too low," and it's like, just 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 try it. Yeah. <laughs> but try it. And now Washington, you know, really understands that, and it's a it's a very popular form yeah. here. What's the uh, uh, it's like? This is the red hash with the orange hash. What's the difference like in the process? Is, it, is there a difference or is it uh, process what? wise? There's barely any difference uh really it's just the product that goes into it so okay. with the gold it's basically a mix of sativa trichomes that we're getting oh. and in the red it's a mix of indica trichomes that we okay. have yeah. and uh the cream is basically a gold yeah. mixed with our mixed with a uh, uh, rosin input sure yeah the so it's cream sounds amazing you guys have a sample of that one here too or yeah, there's yeah a we i didn't go grab it yet but uh there's quite a bit of all of it yeah sure <laughs> Some uh, flour manufacturers will claim that their flour is about this strong, like 35%. Mm. And I keep telling them that's biologically impossible. But yet they still keep going to that lab and like they fudge the results. So I, it's really great to see like actual hash. Like it can't get any stronger than that with the plant material. And that's only about 40% THC. So when you see flour coming in at like 35, 42%, Oh, well, yeah, when you get that high, I, I'd call bullshit on it, too. Oh, I'm not yeah. in a position, really. I don't you know, I don't go there so much, but um, it's also, I mean, I think, it, I, I think it's nice to see success with a product like that as well, and, the, and it speaks to the um, to the market mm-hmm. out here, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, yeah. that people have picked it up oh, in shit. such a, you know, in such a way. I mean, people love this product. You know, we've got long time you know we've been around six years is an eternity for a, yeah. Yeah. For a rec market and uh this product is it's really rare to see a product be so established for so long without changing and without you know and just it's really captured people's attention but well, you really jumped into the high end part of things too because Washington well, state has a high consumer like already aficionado type thing that you know yeah. i think like with the market in, in, in illinois they only have, I think, what, four producers you have? Uh, there's 22 licenses, but there's fewer than 22 companies that have all those licenses. So there's probably maybe like 13 companies that have the 22 licenses. And that's just 13 hmm. straight. That's just 13 people that, you know, whereas. Oh, they're probably traded companies, but yes, it's. Well, yeah. they, they don't have. This should be in Illinois. Yeah. But yeah. they won't allow it because. And you'll talk to people that want a limited market because they want the license to be worth millions of dollars because they suck at business and they're just friends with somebody who's a politician. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you guys, you're my mom. I mean, you gotta, you gotta. Well, we started this with our, you know, boots 
No, oh, yeah. I, I mean, nothing. Yeah, nothing, you can't literally do that nothing. in some markets, yeah. and that's wrong. And so, like, well, on the show, we advocate for a market opportunity like this where yeah. you can bootstrap into like, um, a vibrant business. Like, what was your original investment? Because, like, well, yeah, I mean, we're talking half a million now if you want to get into Washington State. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want a producer's license, I recommend at least two mil. Yeah. What would you do differently? <laughs> you'd still beat you at market. Like, this time? No, knowing what you know now. If you had to do it over again, what would either you advise somebody do that you didn't, or what would you do differently? Oh man, I'd have a, uh, what, how much did you say it would take? Two million. I'd have two <laughs> No, no I'm, I'm totally serious. I would fund it a little better. Um, it's hard to do. Because it's been hard, man. Yeah. I mean, we've really, you know, like I'm actually 25 years old. <laughs> Just kidding. So you got this last time you were like in middle school? Yeah. No, I'm 40. Yeah. But it's yeah. been hard and we haven't been able to, you know, capitalize on things we want. We want to. We we have a, you know, real strong product and a strong company and a lot of people, you know, people behind us and with us and great partners. But man, if we were funded properly from the beginning, mm. it'd be a different story. Yeah. Um, and we could, you know, maybe affect some of that change you were talking about. Maybe we could have helped you, you know, in Illinois have a better situation. Cause like, you know, it really comes down to, uh, the product you're putting in the market. I mean, if you have people that, uh, really care about the product, which we did and it's, you know, that's why yeah. we're here, but like it, it, but sometimes we don't really, you know, those type of people aren't the people that are put where they should be in business, you know, and that's just how it is. But if we had been, I mean, we probably would have had a faster expansion, more, more effective expansion. We would have been in California earlier. Maybe we, you know, and so I, I've changed that. What about the uh, law? That, Cause like if I, I, I would be very difficult to invest in a, a place in Washington state, like equity, yeah. I can't get any cause no. I don't live here. No. And uh, can I, as an outsider, uh, put money into it, or would I need to file an LLC in, in Washington, put the money into that LLC in Washington, and then have that Washington LLC fund? You would have had to be working with Nick and I uh, at Screen Life Games <laughs> <laughs> in 2011, <laughs> and, uh, and, and hanging out at, uh, what was the Chinese restaurant we used to hang out at? Oh, shit. Oh, oh Orient Express. Oh, that was one of them. Been there. That was one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Taitan. That, a... that was the one that, uh, what the guy said. Uh, uh, may have gone shift Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your friend. <laughs> because there was this magnificent uh, light over the table one night. And I was, I thought, spinning it in a respectful manner. <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> So like I, mean, I know like more money's better to start your business, but like you're here now and you started with just you two guys and mm -hmm. you've expanded. How many people do you employ? Like my my my, my butt hurt issue is you guys start at such a low entry barrier, yeah, and create a business that give people livable wages, which yep. more people should be able to do, but you can't because you need half a million dollars to yeah, get in any of this crap. Uh, that's tough. Yeah, I think we've got like twelve people. Twelve. No kidding. Kidding. We've been as high as twenty here. Um, 12 now pretty consistently uh, California's got you know a bunch mm -hmm. um yeah I mean that's the that's the catch of it all isn't yeah. it that's what I was talking about like maybe like because we we care about you know, we do treat them well that a lot of them have been here since the beginning mm -hmm. with us and so I mean I'm not gonna say we're not like super altruistic about it but there is that element's real man yeah so yeah, I think maybe we have a problem not putting the uh, our you know the people in positions where they sh where they should be, and you know it's sort of flipped. Like, uh, well, the one month window opportunity that Washington State only gave that's so why, many citizens. I mean, that's why they did it. That's yeah. their stated you know reason to do it. And you know maybe there's a like a, maybe there's a piece of Seattle too that's a little bit you know that has a innovation in its blood a little bit in the dna right um so maybe you're seeing some of this just out of that culture right you see oh, yeah. look at your different markets right like you've got a well illinois it's where it's where chicago is that's the cradle of consumer packaged goods put uh all the toys out there you can't put all the 
frosted flakes out there you can <laughs> and then you got like uh, la that puts out you know kind of uh type type yeah. really hip stuff and you've got these different areas so i think it'll be interesting to see what type of products and companies can come out of regionally oh sure you guys are obviously subject matter experts in hash if there's a company that's in St. Louis or Peoria or New York, and they're looking for uh, hash, but they don't know what they're doing. Are you guys capable or willing to be uh, strategic partnerships for, for out-of-state ventures? You guys have moved to California, oh, yeah. but yeah. without having the license, is that something that you guys do or, or will do? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. yeah. We, we, we're in uh, California now. We launched, I mean, not too long ago, and it's, it's really successful. Um, we work with a company there in, in Sonoma County called Garden Society, um, which makes some great edibles uh, and, and some great pre-rolls, uh, helped build out their facility. It's a real partnership. It's a little different than uh, like a licensing model. It's a really it's a really close partnership with them. We work very closely with them. So that's something we'd like to refine, you know, rather quickly and move, move outward. Right. Well, I got a guy in Jersey. They've already signed a contract, yeah. but for some reason the money hasn't come in. And then they'd be like, "Hey, you want to talk to these guys?" Yeah, because we could go out there and make some. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to. It, 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 no, no, it's not easy. I'll make but sure it's they easy. pay, and then I'll get you guys in the line. Like, <laughs> well, let's talk <laughs> yeah. about how this works. I would love yeah. the Eastern. You know, I grew up in Vermont. Oh, nice. And I would love to be um, so like up there. Like you, you were in Vermont then, like in the early nineties. So like all yeah. those uh, the people out of Burlington. All those I'm from Burlington. No shit. I almost went to <laughs> law school in Vermont. Yeah. Um, Champlain College. Okay. Is that like cool. a big Dave Matthews concert? No, it's, it's a, a show. Fish yeah, concert. It's a fish <laughs> concert. Yeah. How do you smoke a Cascade Dream? Is it a dab? Can you dab? No. Nah. Well, so that's that's a great question. Let's ask. Let's expand that. And ask what is the smoking method? Because we've got several different types out here, and we've only got a few minutes left. So maybe we can use that to explain. Oh, we should. How do you sure. consume we hash? hash? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, um, my, it's, all right. it's well, not we should, allowed. No, it's not allowed. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, should uh, yeah. Um, hey, we should talk about the hash now. Yeah, yeah that's what that we're doing. Product, okay. So there's lots of different ways you can smoke it. Uh, the quick, easy way that I always tell everyone is just put it in a joint. Uh, yeah. Because I don't know where my camera is, You're but uh, you can go to Mickey's or then up there. there. Hash yeah. tends to be, especially at your body temperature, it turns really soft. Yeah. And you can, I'm you can kind of up. just roll this, roll your hash out, take a little chunk off, roll it out in a little worm, put it in a joint, and it works awesome. The other thing you can do is, yeah, I think it is. is use something like this, which is our hash dome that we're creating and putting out on the market. And what this does is it allows you to put your your hash on this little pin here. We can't really do it, I guess, which is a bummer, but. You light the hash on fire. Well, you can light it up. You just can't inhale yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> regulations. Yeah. So, no, it's so we, get it, we get it nice Look and dirty. Look at this guy. And then you let the hash just kind of like start cherrying a little bit. Okay. Yes. Whoa. And then yes. you let the dome fill up. That's so sexy. And then you pop the top off and you suck it up. Oh. Oh, oh my God. and then you pass it to the next guy, and the same thing happens. Because we have any of those on the site now? Oh, oh yes, yeah. sickagold.com. It, it will it will burn smoothly. That's too cool. So it you don't need to be lighted. It's nope. not like a bowl. That'll sit right on your table, and it sits in my liquor cabinet at home, always loaded. And yeah. And what do these retail for? Yeah, I wish I could take a shot of that at night as opposed <laughs> to the bourbon that they keep yep. throwing down my throat. One hundred fifty yeah. on the website. That's beautiful. That's very yeah. elegant. Thank you. Now, oh, shit. Yipes. It was. Sorry. It's all right. We got it plenty of them. And that <laughs> call knuckles <laughs> glass. <laughs> call knuckles glass. Um, right. Don't grab it from the top. So we collaborate oh, with. Uh, that's, that's a, you do want to grab it there because you want to pull that top. It's, off it's a natural thing. thing. We've got some other products uh, coming. Uh, the hot knives. Oh my god! No way. Yeah, yeah. we have a glass. Whoa. Set of glass what? Hot knives. Uh, it old uh, the hot yeah. knives. That's Those hilarious. are sweet. Wow. Um, and these hash pipes, which have like. Uh, you know, a little like glass screen in them. It's yeah. like a sepsi pipe. And the bowls are specifically made 
and a they're little long. Deeper, a little bit narrower to hold your hash and let it just cherry in there. Well, I love the S too. Like yeah, just real brand. subtle, yeah. Yeah. nice little branding on it. Oh, everything's got the S on it. You gotta, you know. Yeah. The, uh, All right, I think we gotta roll this one up. This yep. up. Where Boom. are you guys at? Where, what's your social media? We've already said that. Sick, uh, at gold. Yeah, yeah. at Sick of Gold. Sick of Gold. And then Sick of Gold dot com. Sick of Gold dot com. Where you guys at? at? Where's, yeah, where's Cannabis Legalization News at? We got Miggy, we got Tom Howard, and hey. Cannabis Legalization Shill News. Shill Forum. Yeah. Huh? Shill Forum. Shill. Shill. Like Huck. Hustler. Oh. <laughs> I'm Who's a hustler. Cannabis He's back to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to use the part where I ask for money now. So I'm trying. I'm trying, <laughs> man. You don't want to do anything. Right. Right. No. Well, he's Miggy. He's Tom. There you go. Yeah, Sean. News. Uh, Josh Josh King King. This is the Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. <laughs> Thanks guys. All right. Smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.